Hi, my name is Shadi Atia, professor at Liège University in Belgium, and I'm going to talk today about the DOI number or the digital object identifier. Well, the audience of the presentation are authors who are looking uh, to publish their work online and to make it traceable. And I'm going to talk about what is a DOI, why is it needed, and how to get a DOI. Well, what is a DOI in general? It, the digital uh, DOI is a digital object identifier that is meant to be a unique string of letters and numbers and symbols that can uh, distinguish your uh, document that is available online. It is assigned to an electronic uh, publisher, uh, published work and it should be used to permanently identify the article or document and link it to the web. And that's the advantage of it, that it makes it permanent. So anybody later on can trace it and it's a kind of your digital fingerprint uh, and it is different from the ISBN because I will explain it later. The ISBN is more about hard copies and printed documents while the DOI is more related to soft copies digital content. How does it look such a DOI? You will have always a prefix with two components. Uh, it's a directory indicator always number 10 for example and it distinguishes the entire set of character uh, string uh, and then it will be followed by uh, a registrant code which is for example here I have the 10 it's the prefix and then the registrant code is the 4225 this is the uh, um, authority that is registering the DOI and they have an identical number in this case a registrant code is a unique alphanumeric string assigned to an organization that wishes to register DOI names and assign through a DOI registration agency. So this is the second uh, string of uh, specific numbers and then it comes to the suffix. This is the rest of the number, the suffix. It may be a sequential number or it may be inco inco uh, may incorporate an identifier generated from the base or based on another system used by the registrant. It can be coupled to the ISBN or the ISSN uh, uh, for example and in such cases the existing system may specify it, its own preferred construction for such a suffix. So it is maybe an editor or a university or an institution that has its own registrant code that they develop their own logic to develop the suffix. So the suffix is internal and it's more used by the uh, registered uh, agency that is uh, um, re responsible of releasing the different documents or the online documents. Now why do I need a DOI number for my document? No, number one, you need to increase the reach and impact of your work. It's very important to make your work traceable and can be found. And if you want to increase its reach, it needs to have a DOI so that it can be universally found instead of having a link that can be broken, it can be temporary out of service. If you have a DOI, you are sure that anybody who is looking for your document, they will find it. Also, it ensures the international standardization of the article. So your article means that it is standardized. It's part of international audience. This makes it accessible to uh, everybody in the world. It's easier identification of published articles, even if the URL address has, has changed. And this is very important. And this is the advantage of a DOI. Even if the address or the link of your uh, document has been changed, a DOI will not change and in this sense people can trace your work just by looking at the DOI and if you are a scientist for sure it will allow you to have better citations for this manuscript or for this document and it will allow for better identification in general. So this is very important for scientists and uh, professionals working in the publishing industry. Now how can I uh, get my DOI number? It's a little bit complicated because you need to use a service that is offering a DOI registration agency. And first of all, you cannot get it as an individual. You need to get it through an agency. So this is the first thing. You have to see the list of uh, registration agencies that are available in your country or in your institution you are working at. Maybe your own uh, uh, institution has uh, is actually uh, registration agency itself and it is registered in this case they can issue for you DOIs and if you don't uh, uh, do not see an appropriate application listed you have to approach any existing um, registration agency in your country and to develop a community to build a service for example uh, in my lab I'm looking to 
uh, create myself a registration agency only for my lab's publication so that I can issue my own DUI number. If not, you can ask uh, to uh, join or um, get the DUI from your librarian in the university if they are offering it, if they are actually registered. And if not, you need to have an agency that issue them and most probably you will pay for that. So you do not need to be a member of the uh, International DOI Foundation uh, to work with a, a registration agency. You just need to um, pay them if they are paid. And if it's a university, most probably you not pay it. And if you ask me what's the difference between a DO, DOEI and an ISBN number, well, the DOI is considered as a digital fingerprint. It's a fingerprint for soft copies. Uh, it is used to ensure international standardization of articles and it's used as a service or offered by DOA, DUI registration agency. However, when it comes to ISBN numbers, and there's a video that I have on ISBN number, I wish that you uh, have a look at that video, you can see it now. In the ISBN, it's the different situation. We are talking here about product identifier used by publishers and booksellers and libraries for hard copies. And it is established to identify a title or an edition of a title from a specific publisher. And you can be considered as a publisher or an individual author also. And it, depending on the country, individual ISBN, you, when you look at it, there are some countries you can pay, f you have to pay for it to get the ISBN number. In some countries, it's for free. And how can you get it? You have to have a publisher that should apply for a national ISBN agency. Um, so depending on the country. So I, look, I invite you to look at the video on ISBN in this case. But in general, DOIs are very important, especially that in the future we'll go more and more digital. Now I want to close the presentation with some takeaway message. How to do or how to get actually a DOI number? Well, use a DOI registration number or a DOI registration agency to get from there your uh, DOI number. And if you are working in a university or a research institution, they might be registered as a registration agency. And from there, they can provide a DOI number for you. Once a DOI number is allocated, they, are never, they, would, they never change for the object. That means item allocated, a DOI can be easily found and should be uh, not changed in the future. So this is very important. And finally, a DOI can increase the citation of your work and your document and promote your research. So don't underestimate it, invest, make sure that you have a DOI to assign it, especially if you are publishing uh, reports or publishing documents that will not go through a peer review or will not be published through another publishing house. You were publishing it in, uh, by yourself in your institution. So that was the message. Don't forget that this is a video as part of a series of playlists uh, or a playlist on scientific publishing. There's a previous video on uh, ISBN numbers. I wish you liked the video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your attention. And this was a presentation on DOI number. I hope you can look at it and benefit from it. Have a good day.